Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this wonderful day. Help us to focus on the worship and let us praise you. And don't let anything distract us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father God, help us to focus on today's lesson and put your words in our hearts and let us to focus on you and pray to you in Jesus' name, amen. Hey kids, this is Annie JJ back to our Sunday news. We are starting our third Bible B contest. We will be spending the next 10 weeks on memorizing all 66 books of the Bible. The first nine weeks will be spent on memorizing the names of the books, and the 10th week will be our finale to see how many families is able to memorize all 66 books. So, for this week, we are starting off with the Book of Law. Next, we're having our Good Friday and Easter Sunday on April 2nd and April 4th. Please be prepared to join us. And now you may be wondering what we will be doing on Easter Sunday. If you love drawing, you will love our drawing contest. The topic will be the resurrection of Jesus. When you're done with your drawing, ask someone to take a picture of you with your drawing and send it to the church office. And we will have an art exhibition on our Easter Sunday. Woohoo! That's it for this week, and I'll see you guys next week. 大家好,我是王浩元,我感觉北京对我们来说是特别有利的 你们也有加入北京哦。我觉得这十个礼拜的Family Bible B 我跟我的家庭都有motivation 10 week family Bible B, we got to memorize empowering Bible verses, get closer to one another and our families and just have a great time overall. During these 10 weeks, I had a great time and I got to see my memory and accuracy improve over time. I had a great time editing and recording the videos for my small group. And it was great to see my family participating and not just me. The DEC Church small group made it very easy to memorize these verses. It was made easier for the little kids we got to watch music videos to deepen our understanding on the verses and we also and it was also a very safe environment for all of us my family and i had a great time during these 10 weeks hello everyone my name is amanda and i will tell you what i learned and what's so amazing about the family bottle be I would usually have a difficult time memorizing the Bible verses, but my mom would always help me write the characters and pinging. So then I could split the sentences up into multiple words and it would be easier for me to memorize it so we could have family time. So God's word is so, so, so important because whenever I'm feeling sad or anxious or stressed, I can always think about the Bible verses and it would help me feel calm and peaceful. I love God's Word so much and it changed me a lot too. Can we do this together? Yeah! <laughs>
我是大伟牧区完艳区海燕小家的Cindy 那很感谢神在过去十周的这个家庭背景活动当中我们全员都参加了而且是全员都背满了十周那我相信对于大一点的孩子来说每周的背景不是什么负担但是对于三岁四岁的孩子来说呢每周背景还是不小的挑战那我
family one. And of course, you guys had a lot of fun with your parents and your brothers and sisters. So this week is the first week of our next Bible B. And I hope you listen to Ami. We're going to uh, memorize all 66 by uh, books in the Bible. Okay, so in the Bible, there are 66 books, and we're going to start with the what? The Old Testament. And then the first five books are the books of the law. Um, so it, it they are Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay, so we will first read the law, the five books, the Genesis, the Leviticus, the Numbers, the Deuteronomy. So I think you guys can all do this, and many of you have already memorized the books of the Bible. So this is like a review, and you know, remind yourself to have all these um, books. Of the Bible in your brain, okay. So, anyways, we're gonna have we we have a song for you, um, and it's for the Old Testament, and I want you guys to um, use it to help you memorize all the books of the Bible, okay? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second. In Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Sephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Okay, so are you guys ready? Okay, so below the first five books of the Bible. Okay, you can do it in English or if you want to do it in Chinese, don't forget to memorize it and make sure you send it to our um, our kids' church um email before friday okay friday night so you still have quite a few days to practice right so 加油好我们现在要开始分组了 peter anko请帮我们分组好吗 the theme for today's lesson is you are not an accident now that might seem a little weird to say why would we even think that okay so Okay, this is the fun part. You're going to take out a piece of scratch paper because we're going to draw something. Get like a pen or pencil. You can even draw on a post-it, whatever little piece of paper that you have around. And in less than one minute, we're going to draw something that you could fit inside of your room. So for me, I want a big stuffed animal, so I'm gonna try to draw a big stuffed animal. If you can't draw, then you can maybe make an outline or do the best that you can. I'm not the best drawer either, it's okay. There's no judgment here, draw anything. I'm gonna attempt to draw a big stuffed animal there. <laughs> because that's what I want to put in my room. You get to make it look like whatever you want. You can even add color. You mm. can describe how big it's going to be, how small it's going to be. Everybody keep drawing. Maybe you want a TV hanging on your wall, then you can draw a TV and decide like how big you want the screen to be. Or maybe you want an orange colored TV, <laughs> then you can use orange. Or maybe you just want 
a poster of something or maybe you just want I don't know a new set of coloring tools then you can draw what you want it to be you can be creative because you are the artist Or maybe you want a new puppy, you can draw a puppy. And what kind of puppy, like a golden retriever or a Pomeranian, mm. Shiba Inu, a Dalmatian maybe, or a French Bulldog, I think that's cute. Or the best dog of all, a golden retriever. <laughs> You have less than a minute, so I'm he gave us two ears. He gave us ten fingers. Why ten? <laughs> so, why do you think God created us? Let us have fun. Okay. So obey him. Obey him. Have fun. Create mayhem. Say that again. Create mayhem because we created so many wars and the earth is slowly dying. Create mayhem? Hmm. Why do you think, why would you say that that was a reason that God created us for mayhem? Nobody knows. So that's actually a tangent and we'll talk about that after the lesson. But um to go back to my original question, all of the things that you said, they're true in that it happened because we were created and they're part of why we're created. We are able to enjoy and have fun because those are part of God's gifts that were given to us. Um, we were created to worship him and glorify him. But if we go all the way back to why we were created, ultimately, we were created to be loved. We were created so that God could love us. And in turn, because we were loved, we glorify God back, right? Now, let's think about that, first of all. God made you so he could love you. But the important thing is, the key part is that wasn't necessary. Normally, why do you think someone wants to love someone, right? If we think about it just from our human perspective, just from us being people, usually it's because maybe we're lonely or we need something. Um, we might want love because it gives us uh, something to do, right? But God was already in a perfect relationship with both the Son and the Spirit, the Trinity. There was already a perfect love in between all three of them. There was no need to create us, right? God didn't need to make us to be, to love us. He wanted to. That's a very important thing to realize that there, a lot of times, I think, in our walks, in our Christian faith, we almost feel like God needs us. Like, he made us so there, there's something that we can give to God that will make God happy, right? But God already has, did not need us to begin with. We don't need to get God's approval. God already gives it to us through Jesus. So now that we know that God created us to be loved, what are we supposed to do? What do you think? Obey him. Ooh, okay, obey him. Because he's the creator and he loves us. That's very nice. Uh, what else? What other? Say that again, Max. Listen to his words. Listen to his words. 
Wow. Okay. That's a very good one. It's very similar to obey him. Anybody else? What are we supposed to do now? Oops. Obey him and like, um, do what he wants us to do. Very good. Magdalene, you raised your hand. To um, love others as well. Ooh, good one. So not only obey God, but also love other people. Very good. All of these are really good answers. Yes, so we were created to be loved and our response is two ways. You both, both of the, the two answers were mentioned. Um, Magdalene, you mentioned loving others and I don't remember who else mentioned it, uh, it was one of the first answers, but it was to love and glorify God back, right? It's not just one or the other. We don't have a choice in that we can only choose to love God or to love other people. By not having a choice, what I mean is if we want to fully express how God has loved us, it really looks like two ways. Loving God which is our, what we call in um, a vertical expression, and then loving others, which is the horizontal expression. And an easy way for you to remember that is what does the cross have? It has a vertical pillar, or if we just look at wood, like it just goes up and down, and then there's a horizontal, right? So there's two ways to express our gratitude over God's love for us towards him and towards other people. Now, it's easier to just say, okay, I'm going to love God because God loved us. But why does that affect other people? Why do we have to love other people because God loved us? And that the key to that is the idea of sin. It's hard to love other people a lot of times because we see their sin and because we see their sin, it makes it hard for us to love them because we don't like sin. But when we realize how much sin we have in ourselves and how much God forgave us, it makes us want to share that love with everyone else because we know how much grace was given to us. We want to give that to other people as well. We're not blinded by their sin anymore because we see our own sin. Okay, so now that we know that we have a purpose and that we were created for a reason, we can start to really accept all of the things that make us and realize that they're all perfect in God's eyes. So what are some background or personality traits or physical appearance that you might be struggling to accept? You can think about it on your own. You don't have to share it out because a lot of this is personal. If you want to, if you do want to share it, you can always private message us. Or if you feel brave, you can always share it out as well. But really think about some of the things because you guys are all at an age where you're starting to become you're starting to realize more about yourselves, your bodies, the people around you. And there's a lot of pressure from other people, from your families. It just is part of growing up where you start to really look at yourself and you start to kind of pick at everything. But this lesson is to show you that even though there's stuff that you originally look at yourself and you're like, oh, I don't like this. In God's eyes, you're perfect. And that's what really matters, right? It's not about your classmates or even your family. All of those, they matter, but imagine this is where the world is. God is all the way up here. Who do you think has the ultimate authority? 
right? So really take the time to think to yourself, like if you're struggling with something that you have God's approval. Okay, so that was really the lesson. We're gonna pray now and then we're gonna talk really quickly about that question that was brought up. I don't remember who said it, but someone said something about mayhem and stuff. So we'll just have a little talk about that first, but I will end this in prayer. Dear God, thank you for today that we get to just remember that we were created by you to be loved, to glorify you, and to love others, God. <clears throat> and we're just so grateful because we know that we're undeserving of that love because we are sinners. It is part of our nature to be sinners. But thanks to Jesus's sacrifice on the cross, we are no longer bound by that sin, but we are free to have a relationship which you've got. And we're so thankful for that. And may we take that and carry that to other people, knowing that there are also people to be saved and we want them to be saved as well. And that is why the gospel is good news. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so who was the one that was talking about mayhem? Nothing bad. This is something that we want to address, right? Okay, Ethan, okay, why, what was your idea behind mayhem? Hello? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're ruining the planet with that, like, with the factories and all that stuff, with the littering and the oceans and everything. Okay, so, yes, that is true. We, are, we aren't taking care of the planet like God wanted us to. And we aren't loving each other the way God wanted us to. There are There is a lot of hatred and brokenness and sin in this world. And that's true. Um, the idea of sin is that it's there. A lot of churches want to run away from the idea that sin is there. They talk about sin they want you to know that you have sin but they don't want to know what sin actually does 